when it's hard and you have a, a goal, you don't know how to get there. Like every day you want to be motivated, right? You want to stay on track. Yeah. And if you lose your mindset, if you lose your motivation and your, your emotions, then it's very hard to go back out of it and to come back and, to, and you have to try again. But if you can maintain that emotion state, emotional state, like decently, let's say, and avoid becoming you know, depressed or whatever, like it's going to be easier, obviously. Are you ready? Yeah, you know I'm ready. Three, two, one, go! We're choosing to unlock the treasures from within. Winners don't back down now, we move forward. Destiny awaits, you got the power, so now rule. This is relentless conversation. Destiny awaits, you gotta move forward. Never back down, man, we always move forward. We got the power, it's locked within. My friend, you never give in, cause it's your time to win. This is Relentless Conversations. Welcome to Relentless Conversations, where the conversations are always to push you forward in your destiny. The battle is yours to win. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Hey, what's going on, fam? This is K Noel. We're coming back with another episode of Relentless Conversations. Hey, I hope you all, as always, hope you all are enjoying the episodes thus far this season. Um, like I keep telling you all, I want to be able to bring you all value so that they can help your lives, help you grow, help you go forward, help you to be relentless in your journey. So uh, the next person that I'm about to interview, I came across him actually through reading his book. Uh, we was reading his book in the uh, book club. It's an incredible book. Um, I love that book so much. Um, I bought another one, another copy of one of his books. Uh, he has a lot of books. So I'm just going to go ahead and let him introduce himself. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me today. Awesome. Awesome. So if you could just, you know, tell our listeners and viewers a little bit about yourself. Okay. So my name is Thibaut. I'm from France. Uh, so I actually lived in different countries. I lived in Japan for about uh, almost 10 years. Then I went back to France for a while. And I went, moved to Estonia right now. In, uh, I'm in Estonia, which is in, like, uh, basically near Russia. <laughs> okay. With the border with, yeah, border with Russia on the East Coast. And so I used to be, so I had a major in Japanese studies in France. So I studied Japanese full-time for five years. And I moved to Japan for a while. Uh, I worked there uh, as a consultant for a couple of years as well. And I didn't really like the job. So that's actually when I started to create my own blog about personal development and psychology back in uh, 2014. And at the time, it wasn't working out. So, you know, I was kind of naive and optimistic. I was thinking, oh, people will love my articles. I'm going to make money. I'm going to have millions of readers around the world. But it didn't really work out <laughs> that way, <laughs> as it often does, I guess. So what happened is that in 2015, I discovered Amazon KDP, which is Kindle Direct Publishing. Yeah. So basically, I found out that we can publish books as a self-publisher for free Yeah. on Amazon. Yeah, it's amazing. So I said, okay, let's just let's, let's write a book. Uh, so I wrote a book about goal setting back in 2015 and I got good, good reviews. People say, it's great. It's amazing. I said, Oh, okay. So maybe I can, I can keep going. So after a while, I decided to write my books and to just, I just kept going for years. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it took some time to actually, you know, be successful, become successful as a writer. Right. So that's kind of the story, I guess. <laughs> wow. I, I am very familiar with KDP. Uh, that is actually what I use for my books as well. Yeah. So, and I, I just hope to be able to have this at least around this close of many of books as you have, because this is incredible. 20 plus books. Yes. <laughs> so um, <laughs> let's talk about the journey. That, that led you all the way up to um, writing. You talked about the blog and stuff. Um, how did, um, let's talk more about how you got there. Okay. I, okay, okay, yeah. So in 2013, I was preparing for MBA business school when I was in Japan. Okay. So I had to, I was reading this book called The Personal MBA. So I don't know if you know the book. And in this book, they had this, uh, 
book recommendations. And they had three books on personal development. So they had Jim Rohn's audiobook. Maybe you know, probably. Yeah. They had uh, Earl, Earl Nightingale. And they had uh, another book. I, I, I don't remember the name. So I bought the audiobooks. And I, I just loved the ideas, you know, like the mindset thing, the attitude and how you can change your life. And I was fascinated by that. And I kept listening, you know, dozens and dozens of times again and again and again. So it's amazing. And at the same time, I was preparing for the MBA. So I, I did graduate from my MBA, went into consulting, but I still had this passion for you know, psychology and coaching, writing, mindset thing. So I started a blog at the same time during the MBA. And I kept going while having this job as a consultant. And I didn't like my job very much. I wasn't very good at it. So that's when I kind of decided to go all in on, <laughs> onto this crazy goal of becoming you know, a full-time writer and maybe a coach as well in the future. So wow. I quit my job in 2017, yeah. And at the time, I, I wasn't really making any money, but I, I had a couple of books out there, even more, I think four or five books already. So I kind of had a sense of what was possible for me. And I, I had good feedback as well. So I'm like, okay, I think it's, for me, it's realistic. I, I can make it happen. I can make money from that. I can make it a career. So I jumped and went full-time doing that, yeah. Wow. So it, and <laughs> what I love about it is you took a risk. Yeah. I mean, but the thing I want to mention is that, yeah, it was a risk, but I had some savings as well, but there was such a gap between the job I was, wasn't happy about and the passion for this psychology, you know, personal development. So for me, it was like, I didn't really have a choice. It felt like, you know, okay, I just cannot be here. I have to, to get there. So I think, yeah, it wasn't really fit as a risk for me at the time. My fellow entrepreneur, it is Bobby Robinson, also known as the influencer attorney. And first of all, I'm sure by now you are enjoying the conversation with Relentless. I'm super excited to partner with Kay Noel to offer two courses exclusively for his listeners. Uh, so the first course is a DIY business formation course. And this course is really for anybody who's trying to figure out what business entity is it an LLC, is it a C Corp? So in this course, you'll learn everything you need to know about business entity formation. And I'll actually show you how to get it done in your respective state. The second course is a DIY trademark course. And this is one of my most popular courses. Everybody's trying to get their brand protected and rightfully so. So in this course, I teach you everything that you need to know about trademarks, service marks, and more importantly, again, I literally show you step by step on how to get your brand protected by actually showing you how to file a trademark application. So I'm super excited to have you. Feel free to go ahead and register today and I'll see you on the other side. Take care. Okay. So, so, so growing up, did you ever see yourself as becoming this author, uh, this, and this coach? No. no so if you told me when I was say, 15, you're going to, you know, you're going to learn Japanese, you're going to move to Japan, you're going to become a writer. I was no idea, really no idea, no way to know. So it, 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 it's not like I was, you know, a writer from the beginning, you know, some people, they like to write, you no, know, uh, I wasn't really doing any much, much writing. So right. yeah, just, just, it just happened. <laughs> yeah. You, <laughs> I guess you, you definitely got to learn those kind of love, those kind of journeys. I know um, I had friends when I was younger that told me, you know, I would be like a speaker or something. And I laughed at all. Cause I said, it's, it's, <laughs> it's no way that that could ever happen. And, you know, here I am 20 years from then and, you know, it, it fell right in place. <laughs> it never, you know, never really thought I would be here. So I'm sure you had some ups and downs on the, the, the writing job. Yeah, for sure, yeah. If yeah, you would, yeah. let, let, let's talk about the downs and how you manage yeah. those. Yeah, so as I said before, at first I was kind of, uh, I had these unrealistic expectations about, you know, writing a blog and making some money and having some impact. So it didn't work out. So I was just, I had no feedback from, no, nothing, nothing was happening. It was a dark, you know, for, for actually for, for a few years, maybe. So what helped me was obviously the passion for it. And I, I could see that some people were doing it, you know, the blog, the, the book thing 
on Amazon, I could see people like, oh, I can do that. I can do the same, even better probably. It was, was my maybe arrogant <laughs> self, but I can, I can do that. I can do better. I can do better than that. So I kept going on that. And also I had this, I can show you, I wanted to show you today. I, probably, I had this okay. kind of very basic notebook and I was actually writing compliments from people, like any compliments I received and also like book reviews from you know, my readers. So every time I was down, I would just go, go through it and say, okay, yeah. Or, or even every day at some point, I was checking every day in the morning as a routine. And now it's, I still use it sometimes, but it's not, not that much. But it's, it was very helpful to remind myself, okay, I'm helping people. People like it. I can do it. So that was very helpful. And having this kind of routine of you know, writing every day was also helpful. Because when, it, when, you, when it's chaotic, you want to have some, some routine, something that you can stick to, right? Because it's, yeah. if it's too chaotic and you have nothing to, to do, like you don't know what to do, it's very hard. But I think if you have some, some goals in place, some routines, it's really helpful to keep going you know, long-term. And long-term vision, obviously. The long-term yeah. goals, very important. Yeah. yeah. I've I learned, especially in the key to writing, like you said, instead of having that chaos, you know, having that set goal, you know, even the short goals from day to day. Yeah that, yeah. that has been so helpful for me in my writing journey and oh, in, li in life period. Yeah. I can share something like uh, back in 2015, actually, I actually had this five-year goals, you know, this plan. And I just, so 2020 April of my birthday, basically, uh, and actually accomplished everything on, on, on my list as a business goals. And I had to write 20 books, make some money. And so everything, I actually went beyond that even. So I was like, wow, you know, this five-year thing is working. <laughs> <laughs> so long-term goals, no, obviously you have to work at it, but starting with a long-term goal and then you can break it down back to the, you know, back to, to this year and this month and today. So I think it's really important. So, that, you know, as I wrote in the book on focus, like if you have a long-term vision and you have, you know, where you're going, you can really break it down and, you know what every single thing you do today is really linked to that long-term goal you have. So then you don't waste too much time in doing too many things and not going anywhere. So I think it's really important. Yeah. yeah. So when you started this writing journey, did you ever think that you would sell close to 200,000 copies? Yeah, so 200,000 copies is for my best-selling book on emotions. I think now I'm close to 500,000 actually, wow. all, all the books right, combined. Yeah. Uh, I would say I, I, already, I had the vision of really impacting like millions of people are really ambitious. I, I, I'm going to get there. And I don't care if, if, it's, if it takes me 20 or 30 or 50 years, I'm, I'm going to keep going. So I would, so I, in a sense, yes, I, was, I had this goal, but at the same time, I could have never imagined that I would sell books in, you know, in many countries, you know, because I, I had publishers contacting me, you know, right. and my best-selling book is in like 10 or 15 languages now and, and more coming. So just really, I had no idea. I was like, wow, okay. If you want to buy the books, okay, eh? cool. <laughs> I have book, you know, I have a book in, in Japanese. I have books in Thailand, in China, very soon. So in many countries, it's it's really cool. So I had the ambition, but yeah, it wasn't that yeah, I couldn't know some stuff. So everything, yeah. So how many books did you write before you wrote, uh, you written Master Your Emotions? So it was a book number nine. So okay. so it really when it started to taken off here yeah. this okay. book was successful from the beginning and then over time it went even more successful over time but yeah okay it was a, like the start yeah so what was the journey like between books one through eight then so the idea was i would have some kind of deadline to write a book try to make them not too long because it takes time so i didn't want to spend a year on a book because then if it doesn't work i don't have forever you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> we have to you know so my goal was to write i think in 2017 the uh, 18, I think, uh, the year after I quit my job, I wrote like eight books. So the goal was like every couple of months, a book, or maybe three months max. That's kind of, I had this deadline basically. And I would just set my goals for the years. So I'll say, okay, this year I have to write this many books. I would write the name of the books and I would try to stick to it as, as much as possible. And I just kept going, yeah. So more of the process, you know, process thing, knowing that, okay, I cannot control the result, but I can control my output and like what I'm doing every day. So if I keep going and on the, in the same niche, I will blow up at some point. That's what my, my expectations, my belief. Yeah. Wow. And so on average, how many books have, do you usually write a year? So way few, fewer books these days. <laughs> so it depends. Uh, I think in 17, 18, it was like six, seven books a year. 
after that, it was more like three or four books a year. And now it's even like two, maybe one or two. These days I'm focusing more on the marketing because I realize I have this book that is selling well. So I need to push it more because it's already working. Right. It's easier to push something that is working, but to try to create something new, but you have no idea if it's going to work. So yeah, that's kind of the idea to keep writing books because I like it, but at the same time to really focus on, on the best selling books and try to push them harder. Yo, what's up fam? This is your boy K Noel back again. Yo, check this out. For all my authors, my business owners, my coaches out there, are you looking to get your business, your book, your program into in front of another audience? Then this is for you. Relentless Conversations is looking to partner with you. Yes, you. So what I need you to do right now, all serious inquiries, email right now, podcast at relentlessmotivationalgroup.com. Hey, I'm looking to hear from you so we can work together to strive to go forward. All right, let's go. Goals. How many goals have you set up for yourself when you gave up because it was too hard? How many times did you feel you weren't good enough because the journey seems tedious? I too felt this way, but then things changed. I realized I had to change how I think. I had to change who I was. I had to be relentless. I am Kay Noel. I want to tell you about my book, Be Relentless. It teaches how to understand your roar, your design path, hitting your mark, and much more. Purchase your copy of Be Relentless today at www.relentlessmotivationalgroup.com. It's not just another book. It's a movie. So are you ready to be relentless? Right. So kind of so, so, what was the key to your uh, marketing? So my business model is very simple. The key was to keep writing books consistently in the same niche on Amazon, knowing that the algorithm would would favor me at some point, hoping it would favor me at some point. Right. Because you know, some books, even today, some books they come out of nowhere. Like someone released a book and you don't know why it's it's crazy. It's selling like hundred copies a day. You don't even know why. So I realized, okay, if I keep doing that, I will reach to a point where one book will sell very very well. And if it doesn't, I will have enough books to make a living, basically. So that's kind of the idea. And and then in Amazon you have specific things you can do in categories, book categories and like algorithm thing. And when you launch a book, you can discount it and try to do some promotion for a week or two. So you have techniques you can use that will help you you maximize the the odds, I guess, or the chance that your book will be successful. Obviously, there's no guarantee, but it's like optimizing your chances, basically. Okay. So that's, that's the only thing I did. And also Amazon ads. So that was writing book consistently, doing Amazon ads, then creating a series as well, mastery series as a branding way, where to brand myself and an email list to get emails and be able to sell my reader the book later on as well, new books. All right. In my yeah, to my list. I actually love the mas- the idea of the mastery series because I that was something that caught my attention. Yeah. And, and I really think that was genius because. I, I was also thinking on the same plan. I have I have actually two books that I'm sitting on right now, but it's yeah. I, I have a, I want to do a series myself on relentless. Okay, so, and that's something that I'm I'm working on now. So just to hear you say that it, it confirms a lot for me. So you know yeah. to just stick to that. I think these days I think the branding is going to be more and more important over time. Because you have to differentiate yourself from everywhere, everybody else, right? Like, right? Obviously, you have to have a good book and a good cover, but you need to have, I think, some kind of branding or some kind of series. And the reason why I created my series is because the book was doing so well, the first book on emotion. I was like, okay, I need to strengthen that book. So how can I do that? So if I create a series of books, I can create a brand and I can refer back to the first book. You know, Like maybe you read the book, okay. Now you're buying the book, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, read book, you, you read book number three, now you're back to one and two. So that's a, kind of the idea. So every new book would be a way to promote my first book as well. So that's also why I did that. Okay. And also because I like the idea of the mastery and uh, focusing on like, these big topics that I think are important to understand. Okay. Yes. So I, I know I am big on listening to different speakers and stuff. 
So who are some of the key speakers that, you know, are motivational yeah. speakers or motivational books that help push you? So uh, as I mentioned before, the, the first were like Jim Rohn right. and Earl Nightingale, because I had these audio, the audio books, right? So I think I've, I've listened to them 50 to 100 times, maybe, I think, at least. And it's like three hours each. So a lot of, lot of listening. And I think it's very important because when it's hard and you have a, a goal, you don't know how to get there. Like every day you want to be motivated, right? You want to stay on track. Yeah. And if you lose your mindset, if you lose your motivation and your, your emotions, then it's very hard to go back out of it and to come back and, to, and you have to try again. But if you can maintain that emotion state, emotional state, like decently, let's say, and avoid becoming you know, depressed or whatever, like it's going to be easier, obviously. So yeah, Jim Rohn, Earl Nightingale. I listened to a lot of Les Brown. I'm sure you're familiar with yeah. Brown uh, on YouTube. Uh, who else? Then, yeah, I mean, uh, Brandon Burchard. I like his book on high performance habits. It's good stuff. Uh, I like The One Thing, which is more of a book than a speaker, I guess. But the book, The One Thing, is a very good book, I think. Yeah. So I was actually rereading, rereading it again like uh, yesterday. Okay. The One Thing. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I think. Okay. I'm cool. sure there are more, but yeah, not okay. coming to mind. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what's up, you guys? It's your girl, Tree, the LPC. Have you ever wondered why you won't let others get close to you? Does it bother you that you feel disconnected from family members and friends? Do you think that you might have imposter syndrome? Well, be sure to tune in to the Self Aware and Effed Up podcast to learn more about yourself as well as taboo topics and mental health. Also, be sure to follow me, Tree, the LPC on all social media platforms under the handle Treaty LPC. Yo, what's going on, fam? This is your boy, K Noel. Look, a lot of you have been asking me questions on what did I do to get started? How did I pattern out my episodes? How did I reach out to different guests? Well, here's your opportunity now to learn everything that I have done leading up to episode 50. I will show you how to monetize. I will show you how to reach out to different guests. I'm showing you so much behind the scenes stuff that I, I do in my own podcast. So coming soon is my podcast course. Be sure to tune in and check it out. All right. K Noel, your relentless motivator. Now I'm motivating you to start your podcast. I'm out. <laughs> all right. All right. So we're going to transition a little bit. So in the, in the form, I asked you to fill out, I asked you your, um, your, top favorite speakers yeah so, so in, in this part i have a phase where i call let's talk about it and what okay. i do from the list of speakers that you you written i uh pick one and okay. i will play a clip and then we'll oh okay like, okay yeah we're gonna Interesting. do like, yeah sounds, yeah we're gonna good yeah we're gonna do like a like, breakdown you, you tell me what, okay yeah, commentary me. or something okay yeah okay yeah all right, so I'm going to share my screen with you, and we're going to talk about it. Negative is normal. It's not successful, but it's normal. It's part of life. You must learn to handle the negative. Don't ignore it. Handle it. I think it's uh, what I mentioned in the book on emotions. Like The point is not to, even if it's called master your emotion, it's not really about mastering emotions because emotions you you all have emotion and we cannot control everything but it's like something happens to you and you feel the emotion it's okay like okay i'm sad i'm angry and you you want to label the emotion first and because if you can be aware of that first then you already have some space to do something about it but if you're cut in to, like in this anger for example you have no space then you won't be able to do anything about it except yelling at someone maybe <laughs> So I think there's something about, yeah, being aware, being able to observe the emotion first and then, let's say, deal with deal with the emotion. Maybe it might be being nice to yourself. It might be solving a problem you have. But sometimes you have to do something about the problem, you know, just or you keep, you keep coming back again and again. So, yeah, I think it's uh, emotions, yeah, negative emotions that you have. And the big thing for me is always be nice to yourself, you know, self-compassionate, which is very hard because we have this belief that if I'm hard on myself, it's going to work better, but it's actually not really the case. I don't think it's eff effective. Maybe, maybe it's the same, but it's the same, but you're suffering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's kind of my, 
my thing here, I, I, I test a lot about stuff about self-compassion. Like for years, I've been trying to be nicer to myself and I, it's working out. So I'm like, okay, it's, I don't need to, to be too harsh on myself. So yeah, yeah. it's yeah, a big I, thing. I think that is one of the key things that I had to learn to master was not being so hard on myself. Yeah. Because, you know, I have my, my day set and then something happens. You know, I may yeah. plan for A, B, and C to happen, but then X, Y, and Z comes in. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, of yeah. course, you, you know, with emotions, you, you know, we would turn to get upset with it. Hmm. But, but then I had to realize that this is just a moment. And, yeah. and, and like I tell everybody, it's, we're going to have our moments and that's, that's fine. We can't stop moments from happening, but don't let your moment last too long. Yeah, ex exactly. The, the, the question is like, how fast can you bounce back on your negative emotions? Because it's okay to be a little bit sad for a few days, but if it lasts like weeks or months and you can get into depression, and then it's very hard to get out of it. Yeah. So I think it's better if you can learn to manage better that state of when you see that, okay, now I'm a little bit dangerous right now. I need to be careful and take care of myself because if I don't, I'm going to go, like I'm going to become depressed or it might be very hard. So yeah, this transition is very important. And I think that's why self-compassion is like, I call it a safety net. It's a safety net to your emotional well-being. I mean, like right. instead of going down, you bounce back. Okay, oh, it's okay. Oh, it's okay. So, you know, you have this hard time and you're like, oh, I'll do better next time. It's okay. Everybody make mistakes or you talk to yourself in that kind of way and you can bounce back and you're kind of protected yeah. to go too, too, too low. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I really like this this yeah, this idea and this concept. I think it's very important for people to understand. Yeah. yeah. So, um, do you have any any words of wisdom? I'm gonna let you have those final words, and also okay. um, mention where people can find you as well. Okay. So, so your your podcast is relentless. So I like the idea. I like I like the word. I think for me in my life, at least. The persevering, like the grit, perseverance, it's really, really helpful. Like, I think if you really persevere at something you want to do, you're very likely to get it at some point. And yes. so for me, the way I do it is like, I really see myself as like, it's who I am. You know, I am, I never give up just who I am. It's not like a habit. It's like who I am. So I cannot give up because it's not who I am. <laughs> yeah. So if people can understand that, like, no, if you tie your identity up to this concept of perseverance, like, I'm someone who persevere. I keep going. Maybe everybody gives up, but I don't give up. I keep going. And if you can do that, they will get, find the secret of success or whatever. But I think they will get to a point where you will see some results. So I know for me, it has worked very well in my life. And I really believe in this idea of if you really try, you know, keep going over, over a long period of time, maintain your emotions, you know, self-compassion thing, consistency, long-term vision, break it down, have daily goals, work on it every day, and you keep going for a long time. And you keep persevering. I think it's going to work pretty well for most people. So that would be, I guess, my last uh, message. And yeah, if, if you want to find me, I think the best way now is to go on Amazon. I'm working on a website, which is not out yet. So maybe Amazon will be best for now. Okay. So just my name, they can find my name and uh, my books. Yeah. So we can start with the Mastery Series, for instance. I think it's a good, good start. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Tabo, I, I really appreciate you for taking the time out um, to have this conversation with me. I do not take it for granted. Um, and I, I appreciate you for your books. I, nice. I feel, those books came, that one book came um, about focus. It came right on time when I needed it. So, nice. and, and yeah. I can't wait to dig into um the one about emotions. So I do have that one already. So I'm looking forward to reading it and I'll send you some feedback on it as well. So yes, you can sure. add to you to your book. So nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much. All right. No problem. Great. And as for my listeners and my viewers, you already know the drill, whatever time of the day it is, uh, you have a great day, a great evening, a great morning, continue to be relentless and leave no days left behind. And we are out we're choosing to unlock the treasures from within winners don't back down now we move forward destiny awaits you got the power so now rule.
This is relentless conversation. Destiny your ways. You gotta move forward. Never back down, man. We always move forward. We got the power. It's locked within, my friend. You never give in. Cause it's your time to win. This is relentless conversation.